Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Andy Todo and this is the spicy Perona decklist you have been looking for. But before I show you what I have come up with, I would like to quickly introduce myself. My name is Andy and this is my first video on this channel. I want to create content around the One Piece TCG and bring you guys some quality videos for decklists, guides and some discussion videos of certain topics. If you enjoy my videos, please leave a like and subscribe. But enough from me, let's take a look at the list itself. Today we are talking about Perona, the new leader coming up in OP06. And I think she is uh, really powerful. This is why I have been cooking something with her. And I think this is um, a really strong list, so I wanted to share it with you guys. Let's get over her effects. Uh, activate main once per turn, you can choose one of the following effects. You can either rest a 4 cost or less, or you can simply give minus 1 to one of your opponent's characters. Both effects are insane, because in the early game you can simply rest a low cost character and try and clear it with Perona. Um, this could be a nightmare for a lot of red players, um, sometimes also maybe blue. Uh, either way, it's uh, really strong in the early game, you can clear a lot of it without having the risk of getting cleared something yourself, if you play early game characters. But um, the list gets even better if we look at the units we play, and I will just start with Baby5. She is your one cost character, and she is the searcher for your Don Quixote pirates. And we are indeed playing um, half Navy, half Don Quixote Pirates. Uh, the combination is great. It works good. We also have some other characters like x -Trick. He is Navy, but we are ignoring the fact that he is also Supernova. And you have a lot of um, hits with Baby5. You search your, um, your Don Quixote brothers. You also search the event. And also Virgo. He is... Um, Navy slash Don Quixote, so you could hit him either with Baby 5 or a brand new, but I will get to this part later. Um, I only play her as a free off because I needed space in this decklist, and Baby 5 was one of the characters that I cut. Afterwards, we are getting to Rosinante. This is pretty self explanatory. He has been such a great character in almost every green deck. Um, simply because he's so cost efficient, being a 2 cost and having a 1k counter. Um, he is looking like your, like your standard baby blocker, but he really isn't because he can sacrifice himself for another rested character. And he is also in Moria range, which is really important because you want to maximize Gecko Moria's effect and have a really good efficiency and um, Rosinante is just one of the characters that works wonders with him. And um, as you have already seen, we are playing the big boy himself. We are playing Doflamingo. I had him at four, but I decided to cut one um, uh, version of him because there are a lot of, there is a lot of room, let's say, in this deck where you could change up things. But I decided that I only need like three Doflamingos. You could just run four, it's, it really is okay. But since you draw a good amount of cards, I had him like two or three times in the hand where I did not get to play all two or three um, copies of him in my hand. So I decided to firstly cut him and also use the Don Quixote event to discard something because in a few situations you want to get rid of something in the hand um, while also getting like the uh, 3000 counter power um, so this comes in handy also it happens uh, a lot that you are having two or all three Doflamingos in hand simply because you are searching and uh, most of the time you you cannot get rid of him in hand because he is no counter and you do not have any other cards that are uh, having effects like treasure card 
you could play something like um, Inupe, where is he? Um, him, where you actually draw to and trash to, but we are not doing that in this um, deck list, so I have decided to go with this route. Um, and for the last green card I will be um, talking here is Extract. Oh, sorry, pardon, he is not the last green card. We have Ryuma, but um, Extract and Ryuma are mostly the same. They have similar effects. Um, Extract has on play KO up to one of your opponent's rested characters with a cost of four or less. Um, this is the same for Ryuma, except that Ryuma has this effect also when he dies. And the big difference is he is a 5 cost with a 1k counter, he is a 4 cost with no counter. But he is in Moria range, which makes him exceptionally strong in this deck. He can on play kill something when the opponent makes a mistake and um, kills him. You could maybe. Um, get uh, some characters with his own KO ability and a few rounds later when you summon him again you could also um, use his on play ability to get another character so Ryuma is like a must of you need to play him four times he is one of your key cards I have decided to um, cut Drake in three um, this is like a good amount you don't need you don't need like a second Ryuma version it just feels right he is also a 1k counter as I said you could just counter out if you don't need him if you have a Ryuma in hand it works it's 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 okay you don't really need three you could go f you could go two if you really want something um, different you could like cut one extract and get a finisher Zoro or even get a finisher where is he um holy jones but this is not what we are doing today we are trying to make it the the spicy perona way as i would like to call it we are we don't need this bad boy and we surely don't need him <laughs> coming up for the first black character in this deck is kuzan um there is nothing much to say. This card is a menace on the board. He is that strong. He is a 4 cost, which makes him a Moria target. You draw a card when you play him and the minus 4 cost he gives when you attack is insane. If your opponent does not get rid of him, um, he will be causing a lot of trouble and you will be able to do a lot of plays you will be able to get rid of most characters because the minus four cost are coming in your favor it just feels greedy not playing for i know he is a pricey card but he is worth the price he does wonders in this deck and you really want to see four of him um Tsuru is pretty self-explanatory as well she is 90% of the time a 2k counter you could um, play her for the minus 2 if you need it if you cannot get around playing her um, it's really okay um, she will um, she will be sent to your um, to your trash a few rounds after you are playing enough characters so um, this is no problem you could in some situations get um, get her back to play the uh, to play her on play it's it's not that big of a deal you mostly play her for a 2k so this is why she is a four of in this deck and then we are coming to borsalino this card is easily one of the strongest black cards easily one of the strongest blockers in the whole game um i only have him um as a free of in this deck because i only own him <laughs> three times and i think it would be a bit too much also as a four off i think three is like the perfect amount he is a 1k counter he can easily get into your trash you can easily revive him but you most of the time you won't be seeing all four of them he is searchable with brand new um you most of the time want to see um kuzan rather than borsalino 
at least that's uh, how I feel in this deck because he does more with his minus four um, and he's more of a menace than Borsalino is and you really want to see him rather than Borsalino so this is also what um, what I be what I be trying to find if I'm playing brand new if I had to decide Borsalino or Kuzan and I'm having none of them in my hand um, most of the time it's Kuzan all right um, Virgo is simply the best of both worlds we have Navy and Don Quixote so he is searchable with brand new and with baby five um, this is like a 2k counter uh, so you don't brick when searching um, you can play him but most of the times before I would play Virgo I would play Savo as a simple five cost he is not more than a 2k counter but he is uh, truly important because you can search him with brand new and with baby five this is this is really good in this deck because you are searching twice so you want to um, so you want to brick as less as possible Savo I run him as a four off because um, of his second effect um, draw two and trash two it is really nice that he gives all my characters um, that they cannot be KO'd the effect is great but it is uh, more important that I can um, cycle out two characters that I want in my trash and draw another two so it is easier for me to set up a specific play for Gecko Moria and most of the time when I don't need like the second Kuzan and I know I will be playing him next round with Moria I will discard him same as Borsalino when I maybe have like two or I specifically do not play him on curse so I can get him later if I have something better with Ryuma this is what happens most of the time because in early game it is much easier to pull off um, the KO because you can rest something with Perona and um, most characters are in forecast range and you mostly want to send your forecast and your two costs um, into the trash so you have um, many possibilities for Gecko Moria and since we are already on him this guy is a menace he is as evil uh, as he looks and as strong as he looks this guy you need a four of you cannot play you shouldn't play Perona or Moria without um, four times this Gecko Moria character uh, he is just that insane um, he brings a four cost and a two cost you can decide which is active which is not uh, most of the times you will be getting something like Borsalino, um, Kuzan, um, the Blocker Rosinante. You could also, if you need it, get back Zuru for the minus two. If you, if you need to set up something, if you want to rest something, um, this can be quite helpful. But you really need a four of. He is that mandatory. He is that strong, and I don't see him go anywhere near in the future for Thrillerbug Pirates this card is just simply him and for Brook I was not planning on using him but this card changed my mind when I played in the pre-release for OP06 and um, I actually came quite far I was um, fifth place in the whole tournament um, and Brook did a lot he really did a lot um, because his unique effect uh, he does not KO a character he puts them into the trash and this is quite powerful because Brook can simply kill Borsalino Borsalino cannot be KO'd by card effects so if you try to reject him or try to thunderbolt him or try to um, kill him with Gedatsu, you will not be um, you would not be having any fun because he does not work that way. But Brook goes around his effect; he simply puts them into the trash. This is also great because he does not require the opponent card to be rested. Um, you have a lot of combo potential with Brook and with Ryuma and with uh, extract 
because Brook also can uh, trash an active character. On your curve, on 6, you could just simply trash a 5 cost because you can decide to give one active character minus one and trash a 5 cost with Brook. Um, most heavy blockers in this meta that will be um, Momonosuke or if someone is playing purple that will be Kit. Or there are a lot of Perona players, Omboria players, um, most of them will be playing Borsalino. Or if you are facing NL or Katakuri, they will be having um, Kikunojo. Kikunojo has the effect where um, you gain a life if she dies when the enemy has three or less life cards. You, you just simply ignore those um, uh, conditions with Brook because you put them into the trash. This is what makes this card so good and so valuable. And this uh, is the reason why I decided to make a bit of space for him because this card can carry you in some situations it is that good it is truly that good and for the last two cards i have the don quixote event where you need to trash a card and get plus 3000 this is uh, simply for um, getting something into the trash and ice age also for me truly important um, this is a one down minus five so if your opponent plays big bodies let's say Moria, if they play Zoro, if they play a Tenkos, Mom or whatever it is, or Shanks for, uh, for the new red meta. It doesn't really matter because having Ice Age in hand, giving something minus 5, most likely getting them in Perona range, so you can rest them and simply kill them with Ryuma or with Extract or with Brook, it doesn't really matter. Minus five for one done truly works wonders when facing such big threats uh, like Zoro or Shanks or Mom or whatever. This card helps you getting rid of them because once you see a Zoro, you need to get rid of him. If you don't, he will get rid of you in the tournament. I can assure you that. So Ice Age is helping me for those big bodies and this is why I decided to also include um, Ice Age as a tool. And this is basically the deck list. Um, the curve is, it is truly insane. Most of the time I go second. So I have um, uh, the Rosinante or the Branu. On four you have Bosalino, you have Kusa. On 6 you have Brook, on 8 you have Gecko Moria, and on 10 you have Doflamingo. Uh, uh, this, is, this is like the dream curve, because you can, you can clear on the first round with either Yuma or Perona herself, make a lot of pressure with Kusan or be defensive with Barcelino. On 6, same thing, you can treasure 5 cost, having Kusan on your field, insane, with Brook being able to attack next turn. If something gets cleared, doesn't really matter. You have Moria coming next turn. He brings back two characters. Is an is a 9k body next turn. Menace on the field. But what's even worse than Moria coming on Dawn 8? Exactly. Dawn 10, Doflamingo resting or let's say freezing three uh, opponent uh, characters or leaders or the leader himself. This is like a dream curve. Truly it is. And this is what makes Peruna so good and so fun to play, truly fun. I have been enjoying her on the simulator and I cannot wait to uh, play her uh, in real life in my local, um, my local tournaments and it's really going to be fun. And for you guys wondering, where is Holy Jones? Where is Zoro? Where is Peruna? Where is she here even? I don't see her. Uh, there she is. Um, you guys can swap out anything you want. As I said, you can like cut one do flamingo that would hurt. You can cut an extra and get one Zoro, get one Hodi. I would not play either one of them uh, more than once because Hodi is your finisher. You play him, you rest two characters, which could. Um, which could be, um, I don't know, let's just say two baby blockers or two blockers 
um, or enemy characters that uh, are a threat and you need to get rid of them. Hoodie is more of a finisher, same as Zoro. You use Nine Dawn, but if you cannot defend yourself in the next turn or if your enemy has something to get rid of him, it can be quite frustrating because you invested a lot to have a lot of pressure. Um, if the enemy cannot get rid of him, great, you have like a million damage next turn. Um, but I like the consistency of this deck a bit more. This is why I decided not to play Zoro or Hodi in this deck. You can freely, you can like also take a Sabo out. It's all up to you. This is like the base I have come up with. I have been looking on some different um, tournament winning Perona decklist and this is the decklist I have been coming up with. I think I did well and if you guys um, have uh, some other options please feel free to let me know what you guys play. Um, I love reading all of your comments and uh, if you guys have another idea or something similar please tell me. And this is basically it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will be making um, more deck lists in the future and um, also as I said in the beginning um, uh, guides. I will maybe do a beginner guide because there are a lot of people now hopping on on um, One Piece as well. Um, so this could also be very interesting and if you guys want me to do something specific please let me know and that's basically it. So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe and I will see you guys on the next video. Peace.